I've arranged all my tasks in a way that if I want, I can see all small tasks that I can do on my phone. I can see what's priority for today and I can easily plan my week ahead by going into upcoming view. In my first video about Todoist, I talked about why I use Todoist. And in this video, I'm going to focus on how I use Todoist to really stay organized and on top of my work. I've divided my projects in two main areas, personal and work. I can obviously add more facets like health or fitness and study. Point being, if you have a zone in life which eats up significant amount of time or mind space, make it a main project. My personal project involves personal tasks or house chores or even personal growth tasks. And work involves multiple work projects, you know, it could be your freelance project, your full-time job may have multiple projects going on or anything else that you're working on. And each project can have various parts to it, which I have as sections and I have it all laid out in a board view. So that's the most basic segregation and then I can start adding tasks to these projects. But I don't just go on blindly adding tasks. I have a system that I follow when I'm adding a task. So let's say I add a task and give it a name. The first thing I attach is a deadline. Then I attach how long it's going to take for me to do that work, where I'm going to do it, and what priority is it for me, P1, P2, P3, and so on. And then I just add that task. Let me pick each one and explain real quick. First is deadline. By when should I finish a task? Now, if you don't put a deadline, tasks will just pile on and you'll never get to them. A deadline, you know, it could be a tomorrow, it can be this weekend, it could be, for example, this week, uh, next week, or it could even be a date. You can also create recurring tasks like pay rent and you can say, hey, every fourth of the month, or you can do stretches every three days. So you'll get reminders every third day to stretch. And you could say water plants every exclamation three days, which means it will remind you only after three days of having done that task. So attaching deadlines can also help you create an upcoming view and that gives you a sense of how busy or occupied you are going to be through the week and just helps you plan better. Now if you want, you can also be reminded of a task. You can attach a reminder with a specific time. But reminders are very temporary and I don't believe you need them to stay organized. They intervene way too much in my flow of work and I tend to stay away from them. Now, there can obviously be some tasks that are not immediately important and hence they don't need a deadline. And for those, I just attach a label called someday maybe and I just leave it. And I try to look at them at the end of every month and see if something could be given a deadline and organize them. Now, both labels and reminders are premium features in Todoist. And if you do plan on, you know, getting the premium version, I have a link in the description. Use that to register with Todoist and then to upgrade your membership to premium. It will really support the channel. Next, while I'm adding a task, I think about how long will I take to finish that task. Some tasks can take 5 minutes, some can take 15, 30 or 60 minutes. Not all tasks are the same. And so every time I create a task, I attach a label that I have created and it corresponds to a tentative duration of how much time I think it might take. So every time I have a chunk of time available, I can filter those tasks by how much time I have available. So if you go into labels, you'll see I've got all of these labels and I can just click on five minutes or 15 minutes, depending on how much time I have and look at those tasks. I also label them with where I can do these tasks, whether on my phone or my computer. So depending on if I'm out and I wanna see tasks on my phone, I can do that. And lastly, I attach a priority. And this one only makes sense if you have way too many tasks throughout the day. Like over here, I have about six to seven tasks for today. But what I can do is just attach priority one to one or two tasks, priority two to a couple of other tasks that may or may not be important to do today and so on. But again, prioritizing helps. And what I typically do is I just attach P1 to the tasks that must be done today and everything else is just non-priority. And then I have a filter that just shows P1 tasks of that day. And I think using priorities like P2 and P3 makes sense when there are too many people working on a project and you want to communicate to someone in what order, what tasks should be picked. So only in that collaborative workspace, P2s and P3s can make sense. Now, once you do all of this, when you're adding a task in Todoist, just look at how easy it becomes for you to plan your week or your day. For example, you can now organize your week because you can go to the upcoming view and now you will see how your week is loaded or how it's planned and where do you have time. Or if you're out, you can quickly take out your phone and look at tasks that you can do on your phone. 
or you can open up your someday tasks list and start organizing them and putting deadlines to those tasks. And so the only two things to keep in mind to really make Todoist or any to-do app work for you is number one, as soon as you have a task in your mind, offload it into your to-do app. Don't say to yourself, I'll add it later, I'll remember this. No, add it right there and then. And the second thing you need to do is add at least three or all four of these things that I talked about in the video and attach it to your task. That's it. And by the way, you do not have to use this system only on Todoist. You can employ this strategy on pretty much any to-do app or any task management app that you use. It's totally up to you. But hey, if you do plan on using Todoist and if you've not set it up already, there's a link in the description. Use that to register with Todoist. And if you do plan on buying the premium version, it'll really support the channel as well. All right, thanks for watching guys. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon. I'll see you guys in the next one.